Hello everyone and welcome back to the third game of the Wild Rift Open 2. Once again, I am Jurassic Game Artist. I'm joined by Tanya and May. This is definitely supported by Yahoo and presented by Intel as well. And we're into our third round, which is Team OK going up against Team Good to Great 1. Yeah, it is good to great one, not good to great two, which we saw in game one. I think the story so far, when we saw game one, it was NXP, the defending champions. They they took the early game, you know, they they got the momentum, they ended the game so quickly. And then in game two, we saw a very defensive style from both teams and granted that both of them were just newly formed two weeks ago, one month ago. So it showed in their gameplay. And we also realized the power of barrier as a summoner spell because oh. Annie could not burst anyone down. Yeah, that's so, right. And... Yeah, oh, going into yeah. game three. <laughs> yeah, and speaking of newly formed, Team Good to Great One is a team uh, that is a group of friends that has formed two weeks ago. They, of course, have a sister team, uh, which we did watch in the first game, uh, going up against Next Play. They're currently in the lower brackets. And if you're wondering, yes, that is Kaisaya, that is the uh, caster. And she's in the jungle, I believe. Uh, she did compete in the previous round as well. Uh, the previous Wild Rift Open with K. They got uh, third place, if I'm not wrong. And on the, the other side, Team OK is actually formerly Asterisk. The same lineup except for their jungler. The bands here coming out really quick. Gregor's Olaf, Akali, and Diana. So Team OK snapped up that Camille uh, Galio combo, which you called a uh, G. What do you call it? The I other? call it the Gamil combo. Yes, it's the Gamil combo. And not to mention Virus as well. So lots of AoE on the side of OK. For good to great, they themselves stepped up some S tier picks in Kaisa and Brom. Um, they also have Vi in the jungle and Ziggs. Wow. So lots of trading of power going on. Look at uh, how OK rounded off their team comp is going to be Lee Sin as well as Ari. Yeah, that's right. Some new picks that we're seeing here. For the first time today, we see the Varus. For the first time today, we see the Brom and the Ziggs as well. It looks like Pei is going to round up that team comp with the Fiora. I'm really excited to see both of the team comps here. I think both sides have experienced players. They have competed deeply in League of Legends PC. Kaisaya uh, wrote an article for with One Esports talking about ah. team compositions, and you know we just watched her last weekend on on the PH broadcast. So yeah, yeah that's right. Not, they... Yeah, not to mention also that she was in the Liab AOV girls team way back. She's got a lot of experience with mobile games as well. So two uh, really a lot of experience coming in here from both teams. Really excited to see what they bring to the table. And we look here at the borders. Uh, Shasha is the one who managed to get to GM, the rest of them were in Diamond. I remember watching these girls on my friends list, they started all the way from Iron and climbed all the way up. Wow. So they have been working really, really hard together, have been training. And I do like their team comp, they have the Camille Galio combo as we mentioned, but they also have single target damage from Ari as well as Lee Sin. So all eyes going to be on this Lee Sin to make early game moves so that he can get his laners a hit. Yeah, that's right. We are here on Wild Rift and oh wow, very nearly coordinated emotes there. Uh, I think that was Ayaya with the uh, thumbs up when everyone else was flashing the B. But for now, uh, they're just gonna bump into each other in the mid lane. They're good to create one opting to walk as more of a unit and okay, just going for the a general spread across the map. In terms of level 1, you would think that Brom would have an easier time invading, but... Yeah, both teams just gonna ward up. Mm -hmm. Start clearing out those minions. And that's right. Seems like it's gonna be standard laning from both teams. With Galio additionally, uh, I believe, waiting a little bit to place own ward. No, actually, he was just standing there to see if Vi would cross into the jungle. Cross over the river, but now Claria has walked back down to the bot lane to join Ayaya. Yeah, for the side of red team, we talked a lot about the blue team's team composition, but red team uh, looks like they have a lot of single target damage, more so than the blue team. So they may not necessarily want to 5v5 because they also rounded out their team comp with Fiora. So again, we want to see how she manages the side lane pressure, how she'll come online with 2-3 to three items. 
And just as we say that she is going to be struggling here in the early games, going to be another repeat of game two. Same thing, mm. half health, you know, just has to clear out her minions and not get dived. But with the lane priority that Shasha got, it means that they, are, they managed to secure the scuffle on the top side and the red team is just going to trade it on the bot side. Yeah, that's right. Importantly, the experience from the scuffle crab does not go to Kaisaya and said it will go to the bottom lane, so that means that Shock Dart should be ahead in terms of camps at the very least. Actually, I tell a lie because Kaisaya is the one with the level lead, at least Shock Dart opted not to clear her wolves and just go straight for the Scarlet Crab instead. Both junglers are hovering around the top side. I think just some insurance here for her Fiora because she was half health, could have gotten dived and Kaisaya would have been in a good position to counter gank. But Lou, look at mid lane. Yep. Speaking of gank, that's gonna be Kaisaya going in with the Vault Breaker. Unfortunately, it does not find its mark. Kaisaya is just gonna walk in from the top side and walk out in the bottom side. We don't really expect a lot of action coming here right now. It is still level 4 or level 3 on some of these champions. It's going to be at level 5 where we expect the Wombo combos to start happening. Mm -hmm. So I think for now, both teams just waiting it out and farming it up. And yeah, that's right, Shock Dart, the first one to make the reset. Gonna pick up that sweeper and gonna probably clear out a war, but there's gonna be a gank once again in the mid lane. Candy Burn is gonna be the victim of that. And going back forward with the third Spirit Rush and forcing the flash out from Kaisaya. Kaisaya was level 5, but it looks like no ultimates were used. So they traded for burning Candy Burn's ultimate, which yeah. might give them an edge in the next dragon fight. But for now, Shock Dark is gonna walk in. Gonna smite that one away. Gonna bump into the Kaisa as well. And Kaisaia going forward with that sliver of health there. I don't think that's the uh, best idea. And she decides to back away. And both teams knowing the limits. I think uh, it's very disciplined of both teams as well because the scoreboard is still 0 and 0. So they know exactly what they should give up. So Kaisaia showed mid and then. OK realized that they could push her in and steal the blue. But Dragon is coming up and the junglers have reset. Everyone has their ultimate except Ari. So Ping's coming down as well. Looks like the red team are just going to clear out some wards. They'll have to ward over the Dragon Pit if they want some vision yeah. and set up the Dragon. Ari has yet to reset by the way. Ziggs actually completed her Ludens already. Ari still not sitting on that copy item, but the charm is gonna land and gonna chunk Kaisai out, and that's gonna be an insect right there. Shock Dark taking her back, that's gonna be first blood into the heads of Shasha Lala, but the Ziggs Mega Inferno Bomb to reply and kill both junglers go down. Oh, that was such a nice catch by Candy Bird. Also, want to point out that all of these girls are in their mains. So if you look at PC, Candy Bird, the mid laner, Clara, support, Aya was the AD. A new member here, the Lee Sin with the Insect. Vaini, who was a support main, I believe, on League of Legends PC, right now filling in the role of the jungler. But with that, you know, they trade one for one. And Red Team still daring here to take the dragon because they were in a better position, even though. Oh, you know, Lee Sin oh. gets it! Trades wow. her life for it, but this is the moment where you go into all chat and you type worth. <laughs> So they really thought that they, they had it because they had better control of that area. But wow, what a steal. I believe they tried to deny that with the central charge, but oh no time to talk about that. Kaisa dropping really low. The Brock ultimate, oh, oh it goes <laughs> wide there. Oh. Piercing arrow will not find its mark either. Very unfortunate there for the great one to lose the dragon and then the fight in the bomb lane. Very happy to see oh. Varus because the lethality Manamune Varus. Okay, no time to talk about that right now. Tadia Candy Bird has shown up and so has Pei Pei. It's gonna be jumping onto Claria, but we're oh. looking at this oh. here trees. <laughs> <laughs> but never mind, that's alright. <laughs> Ultimately, Claria is gonna go down. Candy Bird as well, dropping really low there, unable to fight the Spirit Rush sidesteps that Mega Inferno Bomb backs away. Oh, I think Meanwhile, OK really overstepped In the her. top lane, hold on a second here. We ain't done, Tanya. In the top lane, Kaisaya able 
to stay off the dive, actually able to pick up the kill off the shock dive. Now Shasha Lala gonna go for it, uses those scissor legs, and cuts down that five. Wow, so many things happened there. Just as we thought, okay, managed to burn that Brom out, which went wide, they they really overstepped because they did not have Varus ultimate to set up that dive. So kind of overstretching there and on the other side of the map not sure why Kaisaya decided to stay because there's there was literally nothing she could do except leave her turret and not die but she's gonna give over that kill to Shasha and get that Fiora just a little bit more ahead I mean Camille obviously not, not Fiora Camille getting ahead so so many things happening there was it worth it? Good to great still with that a little bit of a goal lead. But I think okay, still in a good place. They need to wait for their ultimates and they need to coordinate this a little bit better. Good to great are the ones who are first to the Herald though. And they do have the Ziggs who is trying to poke out but they're gonna probably back off and uh, give a leash right now to team okay are they gonna be able to secure this one the fight has broken out chains of corruption that's gonna be a mega inferno bomb landing but i was able to flash away and here comes that kaisa sliding straight in unable to find the damage oh the chains did connect but aoe versus aoe uh, galio hey. was not able to out in you you think about the big circles in a team fight zix ultimate totally zoned them off mm -hmm. And I, this is the player that we have to focus on. Because Six is doing so much work here in the early game and turning things around for good to great. Yeah. And the Rift Heralds actually used instantaneously right there to get some additional damage onto the mid lane turret. Shock Dart is moving down towards the bomb lane. Has gone in the Hexite Ultimate. I'm gonna catch Pay out. Nothing too much can do, and she pays the price for staying alone. We haven't really seen the Camille Galio combo in action. We talked a lot about it. So far, it's been Faris and Galio together. So you have to keep your eyes on the next team fight because Dragon is going to come up in about 20 seconds, which is why recalls are coming in. Everyone just wants to reset by their items. And speaking about items. Yep, we take a look at those. With, yeah, Zix almost with that death cap. Definitely a hit of the Ari. Yeah. You can see as well the difference between uh, the items on the junglers. With Kaisaya opting for a more defensive approach with the stopwatch enchantment. The, the Zonia's enchantment, I mean, and the Guardian Angel as well. On the other hand, Shock Dart just going straight for the Yomus, going straight for the damage. Team OK are the first ones onto the Dragon Pit. Is that going to be a contest from good to great? Dragon dropping to about 2,000. Can Kaisaya find it? She finds that. Fall and battery onto Ayaya, the Infernal Dragon will go down. But I believe they have managed to take out the Varus, and that means that the fight is now in favor of good to great one. Shasha Lala trying to steal back, but that's gonna be a double kill. Candy Burn landing a lot of damage to the side as well, but flashing straight in from Pei and Lollipop there. That's gonna be Candy Burn going golden, but it's not enough to stop the auto attack from the Kaisa. Good to great one may have lost the dragon, but they have won the fight. Again, from Team OK, we did not see the Camille Kalio combo, which, which is the key to them winning these team fights. They need to chain that together with Varus's out. But if Varus's out does connect, it's just that Camille used her ultimate much later in the fight. I think they mm -hmm. just couldn't find the right position. And we we look, took a look at items just now, and we see this a lot happening with junglers because if you look at red team, they do not realistically have a front line, they don't have a true tank. So Kaisaya here is just going to be that CC bot. And junglers who do this, usually on Vi, we do see them go GA first because she's really there to cast her ultimate. She's there to knock up people. She's there to, to be that front line uh, for good to great. And it is working out very well. It's definitely working out very well. Not to mention the fact that the assault and battery caught Ayaya out. And with the Mega Inferno bomb, it's really not too much you could do. But there's going to be a fight in the bottom lane. Shalala. Pounding away onto Pei, forcing the ultimate from the Fiora. Very scary Camille right here, and Shock Dar as well. Walking bot to help out her Baron Lena just in case anything might happen. And not to mention, Shasha's main is Fiora, so you can't help but wonder that she knows the limits of her mm -hmm. enemy. 
of her opponent, right? She knows Definitely. exactly how Fiora works. Uh, this is her main, she used it to climb all the way to Grandmaster. So that's why there's a lot of pressure there, even though you expect Fiora to maybe take over later in the game when she has that 2-3 item power spike. Camille as well has a 2-3 item power spike, so it is uh, generally a skill matchup right here in the bottom. It looks like Shasha Lala going aggressive once again, already forcing out the parry there, and Pei really didn't block very much. He's vulnerable, but Kaisaya is hanging around, and so is Shock Dart. We might see some explosive team fighting right now. Shasha Lala is going to actually go back in. Flashes out as well, and that's going to be a very nice kick from Shock Dart to keep her alive. Yeah, almost got baited there. You want to see Fiora parry the stun from Camille, which is a bit harder. Things happen really, really fast on Wild Rift. And they also made Camille's uh, hook a little bit easier to target, because when she first came out, players had a hard time controlling the, the double, the two layers of the hook, right? You have to hook the wall and you have to target. So on mobile, it's a little bit harder, but now they made it easier. And taking a look at the items again. Executioner's calling on the side of red team. But none so far on the side of OK. They have a Morello and the uh, Bramble on the Camille. Yeah, so that's gonna help out a little bit. Is that both teams? Oh, that's actually Chains of Corruption there. Oh. That landed on Isaiah, forced her flash away, the Brom Ultimate, for the zoning. Baron has spawned and the dragon is also going to be coming up in 30 seconds. Kaisaya continuing to sweep out some fish and still has the ultimate available. But the resets are coming out right now from both teams preparing for the next dragon. I uh, really want to see Team OK bring this team composition together. They also need some turrets to open up the map. The reason why good to great is still ahead is also because they have six, they have wave clear, they're still keeping the turrets up. Shasha? Yep, Shasha. Ooh, I believe she cancelled out that Vi ultimate there with the Hextech ultimatum, but it's not gonna be enough because everyone from good to great one are here. And they're gonna start taking out that Baron. Shasha is down, but okay, have the priority for now in the mid lane. Might be a fight breaking out. Brom stepping really far forward. They're gonna get rooted up. The Sonic Wave, the kick as well from Shock Dart to try to get Kaisaya off the team. Candy Burn gonna join her friends in the mid lane. Looks like both teams for now are gonna back off. And oh wow! Candy Burn finding the snipe with the orb, taking out the Brom. That's a lot of protection now that the Kaisa no longer has. Not sure why Shasha couldn't get out with a hook shot. Maybe it was on cooldown, but at the very least, Team OK managed to trade one for one. And by, as we said, they needed to down those towers. So by downing the tower, they open up the map. They're in a much better position here to take Dragon, which uh, good to great, just gotta give it up, which yeah. is wise. You know, there's no reason to fight for this, but it does mean that Team OK now have three dragons under their belt. Yeah, and good to this is a huge, huge thing, huge win condition for them. Yeah, good to great really have placed zero emphasis on the dragon so far. Instead opting to try to break down the structures on their opponents. And as you can see, Team OK have only got a one turret so far, but good to great have got the turrets in the side lane and they have the zigs as well for the additional damage to those turrets. They also have themselves a small gold lead. And it's actually pretty substantial when you look at who it's on. Because Kaisa here, 3, 0 and 1 with about 11k. And it's Ayaya, who has about 1,500 behind her, of course. So, that's where the goal lead really is, and it's on the Kai'Sa. The Atlantic phase is also over, so we don't see the impact of Lethality Virus as much. Oh, there's gonna be a fight right now. Kaisaya going straight in, but where is the rest of her team gonna get kicked away? And now it's Kaisa who's the one who's forced to kill her instincts out. Kaisaya maybe pulling the trigger a little too early there. Kaisa goes down. You don't need a gold lead if you are dead. Penguin was not even there to be able to throw out any bombs. And Team OK, they found two kills and they're gonna start up this Baron. Yep, in the bottom lane as well. There's gonna be a charm landing and they're going straight onto the Ziggs who's gone. Golden, this might be a third pick and if they can get the Ziggs, then surely they can get the Baron, but no, Baron has started to execute everyone. Ayaya <laughs> forced to bury as well and 
Looks like oh. the real winner of this is Paige, who's just <gasps> happily pushing in oh, the bottom lane. No. Oh, what a turn of events. Yeah. So the reason why OK won that fight was because P showed bot lane. And they recognize that for Team OK, more and more so they need to play together as five. They need to execute these team fights and win them. So they also saw, as you mentioned, Kaisai was a little bit out of position away from her team. It was also a 5v4, which went in the way of OK, but... Ari there went a bit too far and I don't know who was tanking the turret in Clara and then managed to fall to Baron and then yeah. suddenly P gets a turret at bot, so... Oof. It was quite hard because uh, no one really is very tanky on the side of OK besides the Galio, but the Galio is already so low that by the time they got to Baron, they just got poked out by the Ziggs and even though they managed to take her down, she definitely did enough damage. Yeah, and Varus uh, taking off some of that HP from Kaisa yeah. there. Uh, oh, Ooh, ouch! That's a lot Half of HP health, there. yeah. So this is more so going to happen throughout the late game. We want to see this more from Aya. It's going to be her poking them down and then Team OK pulling the trigger to go all in. Yep, and uh, on so the side far, the uh, game is just going to reset. Yep, that's right. On the side of good to great, you want to see the Ziggs doing that. But really, the bombs have not really been landing before the fights have started, and that means that Team OK are always the ones with the higher health bars. Because look at that piercing arrow there, connecting onto two members of Good to Great One. Shock Dart, not able to find the Sonic Wave there. Goldie now in the favor of Team OK, and that is a really good sign for them because the Dragon is coming up in 20 seconds going to be the Elder, so we do expect both teams to challenge that. Meanwhile, for Team OK, the good thing going for them is that mid tower is still up. So that actually gives yeah. them quite a lot of space to play with and that's why red team has been finding it quite hard to, to move the waves in their favor. Certainly, the Elder Mountain Dragon has spawned. Team OK are the ones with the priority right now in the middle lane. And thanks to, as you mentioned, the fact that Good to Great don't have a mid outer turret. Shock Dart trying to find a pick for a team. And once again, while all this is happening, Pei is just pushing down the top lane. Uh, right now, uncontested, but Camille is going to move up. And teleport is available for Camille as well as Pei. So if they want to join their team at Dragon, they can. It looks like both teams still not pulling oh. any triggers. I uh, uh, getting that red buff. It's gonna help out a lot, but oh, what's going on here? Kaisaya <laughs> is attempting a Baron alone. Tanky have a whole bunch of damage here, I, and walking forward, flash forced oh. out as well. I don't think that was ideal. Is now yeah. shot down. So Shopdown cool. takes that information mm -hmm. and starts the dragon, but why are junglers doing dragons alone? I, I'm not sure. I think, <laughs> I think dragon is okay. Oh, whoa, oh. candy bird. Penguin there, if the, not for the barrier, she would have fallen. Kaisaya is coming in, but I believe candy bird still has the ultimate, so they're going to trade ultimate for ultimate. And meanwhile, once again... Yeah, 30 it, minutes it, later. It, it, it's half health, okay? <laughs> And now the rest of the team has shown okay. up. So that means that Team OK are going to be able to pick up this Elder Dragon for themselves and put themselves in a position where they could win. Bro, Kasaya, that was so strange of her to tank up the Baron without her team. Yeah. Maybe a little bit of miscommunication there. Mm -hmm. And as you said, the red team just hasn't been playing for the dragons at all, even though they are the ones who managed to open up the map faster compared to Team OK. And we saw the power of Ari landing that charm, almost got the six. So I don't know, what, what a turn of events. I think yeah. it's really going to be up to Kaisaya to, to lead her team here and coordinate with them for her to be that front line. She has to be able to position properly and make sure that her team is there to follow up. Is her team there to follow up right now? Looks like she sees that they are not. And so she's going to be backing away. The Baron is still up. And it's going to be a point of contention. 
right here. Sonic Wave is gonna land onto PJSU on the Kai'Sa, but Shock Dart deciding not to go in. We are now 21 minutes into this game, Tanya. This is the longest that we've had so far, and it doesn't look anywhere close to ending for now. There is because both teams are so experienced and mm -hmm. they know how to play to their win conditions. Okay. Yeah, Shasha right there gonna land that hook shot and the auto attack from the Camille. Chunking pay out. Shasha's gonna be able to pick out this turret as well. Shasha wow. really showing mastery of knowing exactly how Fiora works, knowing her limits. Yeah. It's just hard for Fiora to counter that with the repel. Yeah, and you see Team OK have three pushing lanes right now. We've got Shasha in the bottom lane, we've got the Baron lane in the mid, and we've got Ari split pushing the top as well. So they have now got themselves a whole bunch of added back control as they continue to open up the game. Everything is going to be on what happens in the side lane. We saw both teams keep reacting to, to the conditions of that side lane. So whether it is Vera who is split pushing and then blue team realizes they have a 5v4 or if team OK, their Camille manages to chunk Fiora out and that's where the teams need to respond. They realize, okay, we also have advantage here. So mm -hmm. I think a lot is going to be pending on that single lane. And for team OK, they are getting a lot of lane priority across the board. So if you look at the wards, they are trying to set up for that Baron. Yeah, and speaking of chunk out, we just see that Candy Burn landing a charm and an orb of deception, and it already takes Kaisaya, the most tanky member on the side of Good to Great, down to about half health. So really looking pretty scary on that Ari right there. Not just for the charms but also just the pure amount of damage that she's able to throw out with those orbs of deceptions and the fox fire as well you're getting a pick on someone with a charm or even just chunking out their hp completely swings the team fight in team okay oh favor. dear isaiah and it's going in shock dart as well candy burn however spirit rushing and that's too far forward unable to go golden as well now isa Going to the back line, Claria gonna pop that stone plate. Kaisaya still very low, but the teleport from Pei as well. Team OK, they stepped a little too far forward. Shasha trying to find one back, is able to do so. Takes out the Ziggs, and they trade two for one right now. Shasha, I don't know if she's gonna be able to make it out of this one. Looks like the answer is actually yes. Hookshot just goes over the wall. It's gonna be a two for one in favor of good to great one. I think Lollipuff more than made up for that whiffed ultimate that we saw in the lane in the early mm -hmm. game. I mean, that was a, a very, very good Rob ultimate. It completely stopped Team OK in their tracks. And as you saw, Ari went in, tried to finish up the, off the kill, but just couldn't because of Brom's ultimate. Absolutely. And not to mention, even though Kaisaya does have GA, her team is so good at protecting her. You know, she she went back, she, she retreated to the back line, and her team was still protecting her because they realized that it's not worth for her GA to proc at that point in time. And they took the team fight. That's right, we're now 25 minutes in to the game. Looking at the items right here, most of the carries have already completed their builds a couple of minutes ago right here. We can see Ziggs nearly on full items, Ari on full items, Kaisa and Varus both full up on the items as well. That means that at this point in time really it's just about, I guess, the tanks trying to find a couple more items in their pockets. Continuing to get vision around this Baron here and Brom actually getting caught out by the Chains of Corruption. Pops the stone plate. Oh my lord, that arrow and oh the damage! Where did the last tick come from? I think it was Airy. And now that opens up Team OK to the idea of taking that Baron and it's dropping down to about 9,000. Will there be a contest from Good to Great One Candy Burn playing zoning duty right there? I don't think anyone wants to face check into this. Ari Kaisaya looking around decides against going in and team okay pick up the baron oh this game that was such a nice night by aya 
airy is the choice here for Varus. This is late game Manamune, fully stacked lethality Varus at your service. And with the Baron, we expect Team OK to just push this down. Yeah, but are they gonna be able to do so? Shock down dropping really low as well, but Shasha with full health. Is there and who is here to rescue Pei? Pei has to flash out for herself. It doesn't matter because Team OK just barrels straight down for the Nexus and they take out good to great one. What a showing from both teams. I think both teams here need to be given credit. It's they both were trying to play to their win conditions. So a little bit of uh, some questionable decisions here and there, but nonetheless, we saw a lot of control, right? Which is not something that we saw in the last two games. But both of them were very disciplined, they knew their win conditions, and both were trying to play towards it. In the end, of course, Team OK came out because, well, that Aya, the, the ultimate onto, Va onto uh, Braum, rather, as well yeah. as that Snipe, completely opened up the map. It gave them Baron, and it gave them that last push that they needed to seal the deal. And that is absolutely the game-winning play right there. That beautiful Snipe and the area as well, just for the finishing blow that allowed... Team OK to move to the Baron and find the win. It was a very long game though, both teams. It was very back and forth, in fact. If you look at the scoreboard yes. as well, 9 to 10. This is a kind of thing that you'd see in League of Legends, you know, where the game is yeah. about 25 <laughs> to 30 minutes long. The score is about 9 to 10. But hey, it, it can happen in Wild Rift 2. Both teams really opting to just skill and play very conservatively. Though I feel like Good to Great One could have placed more emphasis on the Dragons. Well. Yeah, it, it came to bite them back because mm -hmm. Team OK managed to get that Elder Mountain. And even though Ziggs was hurting so much in the early to mid game, by the time late game came, we saw the ultimate go down on Virus and it didn't even hurt Virus because of the shields, the resistances. So slowly, slowly, we, we saw Ziggs just fall off entirely. And very unfortunately for Pei, could not get the side lane pressure that the team was banking on in the late game. Yep, that's right. Congratulations, of course, to Team OK. They're going to be moving forward to the next round for Good to Great One. They are going to join their sister team in the lower bracket where they still definitely have a chance to come back. For us, we're going to be going for another break and when we come back, there's going to be more action on the Wild Rift. Stay tuned.